Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to work on solving combined variation problems. Now, remember that when we're working with combined variation, we're really talking about taking many of these uh, basic forms of variation like direct, inverse, and joint, and putting them together into a single formula. All right, so let's look at our quick tips on uh, how we're going to solve these problems. We first just want to write down the formula that kind of packages up all the types of variation. So we'll have to pay close attention uh, in order to put all of our variables in the right spot. Remember that if we're dealing with, say, direct or joint variation, those variables end up on the top. And anything working with inverse variation, those variables are on the bottom. All right, once we have our formula, we'll go ahead and solve for our constant of proportionality, k. And once we have the k, we'll go ahead and put that into our original formula, and then go ahead and solve the rest of it. All right, let's look at uh, one of these example problems and see how we can carefully put it together, okay? So this one says t is jointly proportional to w and r and inversely proportional to q. If w equals 2, r equals 3, and q equals 12, then t is equal to 25. Find t when w equals 3, r equals 4, and q equals 6. Okay, so a ton of information in this one. Let's see if we can carefully start putting it together. So the first thing I see is that t is jointly proportional to w and r. So I'm going to put that into my formula. So t is jointly proportional, so k, w, and r. Now it says uh, it is also inversely proportional to q. So since that's an inverse relationship, we'll put the q on the bottom. All right. So this is the formula that we want to think of starting with. Now let's go ahead and put in some information and actually solve for the k. So if w equals 2, so k times 2, r equals 3, and q equals 12, then t will equal 25. OK, not bad, not bad. We can solve this. So I have 25 equals k. Uh, times 6 all over 12, which is the same as 25 equals k times 1 half. Just reducing the 6 over 12 since uh, 6 goes in the top and into the bottom. Okay, so to get k all by itself, multiply both sides by 2, I get 50 is equal to k. So now our formula looks like this. t equals 50 w r all over Q. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve the rest of it now that we know what k is. So find t when w equals 3, r equals 4, and q equals 6. Let's see, what do we got? So w equals 3, r equals 4, and q equals 6. So t equals 50 times 12 all over 6. Uh, looks like I can do a little bit of reducing here. 6 goes into the bottom and then to the top. So in the end, it looks like t is equal to 50 times 2, or 100. Not bad. Now, when we get to our word problem in the next one, uh, again, watch how I closely uh, take each basic variation and put it into the correct spot. All right. Uh, in this word problem, we have that the pressure P of a sample of gas is directly proportional to the temperature T and inversely proportional to the volume V. All right, so something about the pressure, I got temperature and volume, three different variables I'm, I want to worry about. All right, so suppose that 100 liters of gas exerts a pressure of 33.2 kilopascals at a temperature of 500 Kelvin. What would the pressure be if the temperature was lowered to 400 Kelvin and the volume is decreased to 80 liters? Okay, so a lot of stuff later on. Uh, we'll use that to figure out the K, but first we just need to figure out this formula. So let's see, our pressure P for a sample of gas is directly proportional to the temperature. So K, T. But it's inversely proportional to the volume. So we'll put the volume on the bottom. So we'll need to use this formula to go ahead and solve for the K. And that's what uh, we'll use this little bit of information initially here. So we got 100 liters of gas. We'll put that in for volume. 
Uh, exerts a pressure of 33.2 kilopascals, so we'll put that in for our pressure here, and our temperature, we'll put it in for T. Let's get a little bit more space. Okay, so I've already copied down the formula, and let's go ahead and put in those values. So we know the pressure, don't know the, the K value just yet. Uh, we are at 500 Kelvin, all over, 100 liters. All right, so to solve this, I'd begin by multiplying both sides by a 100. Then I'd divide both sides here by 500. So this would give me 6.64 is equal to K. All right, now that we have K, let's go ahead and take it, plug it back into the formula here. So P equals uh, 6.64 temperature all over volume. All right, now for the second half of this, we've changed the temperature and the volume of the gas just a little bit. Let's take a look. So what would the pressure be if the temperature was lowered to say 400 Kelvin and the volume was decreased to 80 liters? Well, let's put those values in for our temperature and volume and find out. So our pressure equals 6.64, our new temperature 400, over volume 80. All right, so multiplying the top part here, I get 2,656 all over 80. And uh, going ahead and doing the division, I get 33.2, our units, kilopascals. So you can see that uh, by changing this one, actually we ended up with the exact same pressure. Uh, but no matter what type of, say, combined variation problem you're going through, make sure the setup is good, and then you'll go through the same steps as you go through any other type of variation problem, solving for your K and then getting some new information out of it. All right. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.